So, you just got Spyro Dawn of Dragon working on Dolphin, and you're using a PlayStation shaped controller. Just go into settings and you simply pick classic controller and... Oh wait... This game doesn't support that. Instead you have to deal with the forced motion controls. Yay. Disclaimer, Dawn of the Dragon can be played on Dolphin with a PlayStation 4 controller, as you may have seen on other videos of mine. And I assume the same can be done with PlayStation shaped controllers. However, I learned that each version of Dolphin can have a different result to your controls, even when the settings are the same. So me being a stubborn little goat, I downloaded the latest version of Dolphin back in 2018. And I never felt the need to update it. Why? I don't want to lose my save states, okay? Once you change versions, none of your save states work again. And this old version had everything I needed, really. So once I actually decided to check out a modern Dolphin in 2024, my controls reacted... different. Originally I was gonna make this tutorial in the old 2018 version, which would have aged badly. It doesn't really matter for the Eternal Knight, but for Dawn of the Dragon, uh, it's a bit more complicated than that. And while I can make a tutorial with the latest version of Dolphin, who's to say that this one won't be dated in the future? There are also countless versions of Dolphin. Different people might be using different versions. I am not gonna be able to keep up with every single one of them. I just can't. So yeah, please keep in mind that I cannot know what version of Dolphin you are using and what changes it's gonna have in the future. However, I live in the now. And even if this video is gonna age in the future, maybe this could at least be a nudge into the right direction for some people. Or perhaps you are interested in downloading the exact same version I am using right now. For that matter, I am using this version, which came out in 2024. And I'll also leave a link in the description. That being said, I'll try my best to share what has worked for me and hopefully this will work for you too. What's annoying about Dawn of the Dragon is that the first thing you are greeted with in this game is combat. Followed by motion controls that you cannot fail or else you die. In all this chaos, you're gonna have to test the controller, but it's not impossible. Open your controller settings. By the way, you can save your controller settings over here, so if you want to switch between the Eternal Knight and Dawn of the Dragon, I suggest you save each setup. First of all, check Upright's Wii Remote. That'll get rid of the forced cursor in the main menu. And while this is bearable compared to the Eternal Knight, this is gonna make the rest of the setup way easier. Under Extension, you should pick Nunchuck. This is what each button does in Dawn of the Dragon. Keep in mind, there are quite a few pages. You can get it as closely as possible to PlayStation. This is how. You cannot mimic the PlayStation 4 100%. For example, the Wii doesn't use a single button for the grabbing and climbing. Instead, you have to push A and B at the same time. So that means circle is a free button. I say do whatever you want with it. And of course, since you can't really select a specific element on the Wii version, there is a single button that rotates through all the elements of Spyro and Cinder. I guess you can assign the element switching button to one of the D-pads, but I suggest not doing that and I will explain later why. I guess you can also 
face the element switching button on circle, but th th that's such a weird placement. Uh, at, at this point you might as well just customize it in, in the way you like it. That's what I did. What you're gonna have to pay extra attention to is that this game uses quick time events. And if you're not using a texture pack that changes the buttons on the screen, A is the jump button, B is the weaker melee attack, and we remote down is the stronger melee attack. The stronger melee attack can be done by filling all three of these in the controller settings under motion simulation. So if you can use a strong melee attack, then you can do a quick time event that includes the Wii remote down icon. The dodge button is kind of similar to set up. Go to extension motion simulation and fill in these three. Now there's one more control that is a bit more tricky to assign, but it's everywhere in the game and it's the one thing that screwed me over when switching to a different dolphin version. It's when you have to shake both Wii Remote and Nunchuck. When playing on the 2018 version of Dolphin, I added them to the right analog. This is why in my synchronized challenge videos, you keep hearing this whenever I had to do these controls. Oh gosh, that's gonna be loud. That's me shaking my right analog up and down. They were also my cursor in the main menu, because I only learned after my playthrough that upright Wii Remote worked for Dawn of the Dragon 2. However, using the exact same controls in the modern Dolphin makes my dragons do this. You see that? I just simply wanted to move my camera and Spyro is just yeeting himself. I assume that the shaking controls are a lot more sensitive in this version. I'm sure it was possible to have the camera and the shake and coaxes on the right analog. And there's a lot of new controller options on the new Dolphin, but I cannot disable my dragons randomly yeeting themselves every single time I want to move my camera. But being so sensitive made it possible to assign the shaking controls to buttons that I wanted to use originally for them. Since you can't use the D-pads to select specific elements anymore, I use them for the shaking controls, specifically the up and down, and it works. It also makes a lot less noise. I even tested out the D-pads on the older Dolphin, and while it works, it is slower. And once you get to the big boulder in Birdlands, which requires the most shakes, you're pretty much at a dead end. That's the kind of differences you can expect when you switch versions of Dolphin. I will also share you my personalized controls. On PlayStation, I am aware that Square became the new melee button in the trilogy, while the two element buttons were assigned to R1 and R2. I wasn't a fan of that. So for Dolphin, I decided to match the controls closer to A New Beginning and The Eternal Night. Just like those two games, circle is for melee attacks, square is for elemental attacks, and triangle is for secondary elemental attacks. As for the stronger melee attacks, I have assigned that to L1. I never really used that attack that much in the first place. In the meantime, R1 had the dodge button, and R2 switches dragons. While my element switch button is L2. It probably makes more sense to have L1 to be the dodge button, just like on PlayStation. And have the stronger melee attacks be R1, which is closer to triangle. But I'm already used to this setup, so whoops. Again, do whatever you want. You can customize your own button preferences. So TLDR, if you are using a PlayStation controller, this is how you get as closely to PlayStation as possible. And this is my personalized controls that are similar to A New Beginning and The Eternal Night. Here's also a picture of a PlayStation controller just so you know where each button is located. In case you're using something else but still want to match the buttons to mine. Oh by the way. Yes, it is possible to change the buttons that appear on your screen by changing the textures, but I don't think I can help you with that. 
I hardly finished my own customized textures, but truth be told, I mostly did it for the quick time events. I memorize everything my controller does. But quick time events are not so fun when the buttons on the screen don't match your controller. And I will never be able to make a definitive texture that can help everyone. Not everyone is gonna be using a PlayStation controller. Not everyone is gonna be using the same setup that I use. And then there's the different versions of Dolphin impacting the controllers even more. I simply just can't create a customized texture out of a spectrum of every possibility. So you can either try to learn how to texture hack on Dolphin and make your own personal button texture pack, or try to memorize that A is jumping, B is weaker melee attack, and Wii Remote Down is stronger melee attack. Also, the Wii Remote Down icon shows up when you have to shake your controls too. So when you change that texture, it will clash. You should prioritize the quick time event though. With all that, I hope this game is working for you and that the controls are comfortable enough. Last but not least, if you want to play the synchronized challenge, where you get to control Spyro and Cinder at the exact same time, all you have to do is save the controller setup and load it to player 2. And for player 2, swap the element switching button with the dragon switching button because the only freedom you are given is being able to switch elements of Spyro and Cinder individually. Unless you want to have an extra challenge for yourself and have those buttons be synchronized, but um, but since this game is, has a rotation for the elements rather than being able to pick them individually, I, I thought it was more fair if you could just uh, individually change Spyro's and Cinder's elements. Ideally, you want Spyro's element switch button to be somewhere on the left and Cinder's on the right. Like, L2 for Spyro, R2 for Cinder. That's what I did. By the way, my fellow texture hacker Freezy mentioned that there is a mod for Dolphin that can control the bloom. This mod is the very reason why I went out of my comfort zone to download a newer version of Dolphin and learning how dated the 2018 version was nowadays. Link will be in the description as well. Have a nice day.